Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the last episode about Terracotta Warriors. Don't forget, you can still comment on the video to enter the giveaways. On this episode, I will take you to the rest of Xi'an. Enjoy. It's too hot. It's too hot, so gotta have some watermelon. Waiting for the car to go to this uh, temple. It's supposed to be really beautiful. We're entering Guangyang Temple. They give us free water, wet napkins. It's beautiful. You must come here, guys. And now at the Guangyang Temple, it is the only Lama Temple in the Shanxi Province. It's really beautiful. It was built in 1703, actually. So around 320 years old. Wow, ah, so beautiful. When Kanxi, the Emperor Kanxi, inspected the northwestern part of China, because you know back then the king, the emperor, always had to pay visit to the regular people so that he can see people are living happy and wealthy or some sort. Well, he ordered to make the temple with the intention to stabilize the unity of the Han people, the Tibetans and the people in other ethnic groups in the Northwest. It is also the only primary worship place for the Green Tara in China, one and only. So I scanned the QR code here to get a good luck card that says it will bring me wealth. Oh, by the way, guys, this temple is free to enter. This is the, uh, we're entering the wall of worship. So we're gonna walk three rounds for good luck from the left to the right. And we have to touch each corner. So it says it will give you fortune, luck, wisdom, and health after the three rounds. Highly recommend to come here, guys, if you come to Xi'an. I just bought a good luck card. I'm gonna write my wishes and put it on this wall. This is the... I'm gonna have to borrow a pen. I'm gonna write my wishes. A thousand something years ago, one of the princess at that time, a very famous one actually, was married to Tibet, to one of the king or prince in Tibet. He wanted to unite the country of China and Tibet, so for the people. And he brought a lot of things to Tibet, so the people in Tibet really loves her. So they name her the Green Terra. It is one of the most famous and religious temple here in uh, this province, and I highly recommend you to come, it's so beautiful. Oh, wow, look at this tree. Wow, this is the holy tree, guys. Let me show you. Look at these giant fishes. Wow, wow, look at that. This is in the middle of a temple. One of the most beautiful temples here in the province. This is the Mandela of Green Terra, guys. I really love this area that was right outside the temple called the Corner of Life. It was very, very picturesque and there were many people taking like wedding photos and stuff. I'm now getting ticket to enter the city wall. Stepping back into history, built in the 1400, the most well-kept fortification in the world, guys. Oh my god! So I am gonna enter on the left side. Wow! It's one of the most iconic landmarks in the entire city. An ancient bell. My god! Look at what I'm looking at. Wow! Oh my god, I'm actually inside. This is so impressive. Look at what's behind me, guys. It's one of the towers! I am just so happy to be here. Let me tell you a little bit about this uh, impressive fortification. 
They have been here in the 1400s, I think I mentioned that, so 600 something years old. And then they are 13 kilometers long, so it is really long. That's why you can rent a bike here uh, as well. Probably not by this entrance, at the other entrance. So okay. let me show you a model. This is how big the imperial city was in the Tang Dynasty. Look at this huge, wow, it's so impressive. The Tang Imperial City. Well, as the name implies, it is a smaller city built in the second year of the Gaowang period with the within the large Chang'an city. This smaller city stretches 2,820 meters from east to west. Walking up here at top of the city wall is one of the best ways to get a bird eye view of the whole city, or well, kind of, at least in the in the ancient times, right? Because it's like it was for defensive purposes, obviously. That's why they built these gates to protect the empire and everyone else in the city. They look so pretty, right? These walls. This is ancient, and they have been around for over 600 something years now. The best time to come to the city wall is sunset and nighttime. These walls are beautifully lit with warm soft lighting that highlights the ancient structure. Walking along these walls after sunset provides a magical view of both the ancient and modern side of Xi'an. I probably mentioned that earlier that you can rent a bike, right? As it is about 13 to 14 km long, it would take you about 2 hours, but I think it's a great way to see the city. So guys, we are here at the Shanxi History Museum. It is one of the hardest places in the area to get tickets because it's free. This was built in the 70s. It's China's first modern museum. So it's almost 40 years old already. Inside the museum, you will find a fascinating mix of exhibits that really bring the region's history to life. It starts with ancient artifacts from earliest Chinese dynasty, like beautiful jade pieces and intriguing bronze vessels that show how people lived and worshipped thousands of years ago. The name Chang'an, name of the capital, means everlasting peace. It was served as the capital of the maximum dynasties in the history of China and the longest time period in ancient China. This was a stone tomb door. It's a coven that I'm trying to show you. It's a three-sided coven. With, it's painted with carving and everything. We had entered the Chui and Tian Dynasty, which are the most glorious times in ancient China. The years were 581 to 907. It was the largest and most prosperous metropolis in the world. It was the richest country at that time in the world. This was one of the burial sites. At that time, they started using these cups made from jade. There are two paid exhibitions inside. One of them is like morals from uh, the Tang Dynasty, like all the paintings and stuff. I heard it's really worth it to see and much stronger in HC2. I think it is worth it if you are into um, Chinese history. There are also lockers you can get on the left side. And on the right side is where you have to get the tickets if you already register because it will be on your passport or your ID. This is the drum tower. Now we are at Kuimanjie. It is a very, very touristy district. But I just want to show you guys what it's like at night here. Let me show you guys some of the food maybe. the same food like in the whole street wow this is the famous spot for the picture yeah, i'm just gonna get some dumplings and take it back to the hotel to eat i am just too exhausted okay.
at the sleepless night district. If you can see, there's a fountain here every day at 7 p.m. If I'm not wrong, there is a big, huge, gigantic performance. I missed it because I don't have other times to come, but I, uh, I will insert maybe a video of it. Highly recommend you to come here. Although these are man-made buildings, but it really, they're trying to show you what it was like back then. You will have so many of these girls dressing the Han costumes. Not only girls, ladies, um, like the older ladies, even the aunties, they will be dressed in these costumes, taking pictures. And then the guys also. When you're around so many of people in this costume, you actually do feel like that you went back in time, right? So yeah, so let's have dinner first. This sleepless uh, walking pedestrian district is so long that this is the area where the show is every night. Like I said, there is a water fountain show every night at 7. But times can change, so please actually do your research. From what I know lately, it's been at 7 p.m. and it should be for a while. There are many shows here to watch, guys. Aside from these little stands for all types of snacks, there are tons of restaurants on both sides of the district. So if you don't want to snack on street food, definitely go to a restaurant and I have been a lot, having a lot of snacks already so that's why I'm going in into a, a proper local restaurant it's actually not that local but uh, according to my friends uh, this one is pretty good it's got the highest rating here this restaurant is is right here I will insert a name so that you guys can find it Chang An Dai Pai Dang so my dinner finally arrived and I ordered something that I haven't tried before. So first, I got this uh, lychee liquor. So let's try it. Very sweet, tastes just like lychee juice. It's very good, I like it. By glass, I should say. They, they do have sometimes in bottle, especially in a nicer restaurant like this one. So I ordered something quite cute, uh, as you saw in the video. So supposedly, I can eat this. It's very flaky. Um, so I have no idea what it is as well. So let's try it together. Honestly, I have no idea. Actually, it tells you the white is durian. Ooh. This is like an imitation of like the Chinese mao bi. Means like, I don't know what is the name of it. It's, it's like a. But like you you write with ink right so this is the ink but it's actually like a sauce and it's sweet it's very cute and then now let's try this guess what this is it looks like a lychee tree as you saw in the video but i suppose it's actually a whole shrimp so i'm gonna try without sauce first oh it is shrimp wow it's good so guys did you see Maybe I should switch it. It looks like it's on a lychee tree. Let me show you what the inside of the shrimp looks like. And this is a vegetable dish that I order. No, actually bean curd, sorry. Mm. Perfect. So now let's try this one. It looks like um, it looks like a dessert. Oh, it's actually my favorite. It's yogurt. Mmm, love. So I'm gonna end the meal with that. So see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, Xi'an. It's my last day here, so I thought it's time to show you guys the breakfast. You can get omelets, scrambled eggs, you know, like all kinds of eggs here. There's also sausages and bacon. And then you will have the noodle station where you can get a lot of the noodles that you like with meatballs, the tofu and veggies. Assorted bread with some steam, I think sweet potatoes and yam and corn. And then over here is one of my favorite station, jamping. It's like a bean curd and egg bun, but you can choose. And uh, this is their most famous in Xi'an. You will see this everywhere. We will start over here. Fruits, 
And then you will get to the pastry stations, pancake, waffle, again bread pudding, croissant. I tried this the other day, it's very good croissant. And different jam with butter and cream and donuts, danishes and muffins. Yeah. So not bad, not bad. So we're trying this shim. It's meat inside. I picked the beef. It is a very famous dish here in Xi'an. I've been having it almost every day since I arrived. Highly recommend. Only if they're freshly made though. Guys, we are at the Xi'an High Speed Rail Station. And we are on the way to Chengdu. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you all enjoyed the last three episodes of Xi'an. On the next episode, I'm gonna show you Chengdu. It's my second time there. I love all the food and the relaxing vibe of the city. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.